All right, we haven't done one of these in a while, so I figured it was time. It was important. We have two things we're talking about today. So the first, at first with Bonnie, I want to talk about a program we have coming up this Saturday. Yes. On sign language. American Sign Language. Tell me a little bit about it, please. Well, it's going to be, um, I think it's basically going to be a basic sign mm-hmm. language for beginners. Mm-hmm. And it's open for all ages, so anybody can come. It's going to be at uh, 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock, mm-hmm. one hour program this Saturday. And that would so be Saturday the 11th. The 11th, yes. Wonderful. Yes. That's exciting. And then I hope to hear, we'll have you, we'll have, we'll back and we'll talk a little bit about it okay. afterwards because I'm excited and we can hopefully maybe do this again if it goes mm-hmm. well. Okay. Me too. I'm excited about this program. Yeah. We've, we've never had one at the library. So okay. So we're trying something new. Yes. And now something we've, we, we know is tried and true, bringing <laughs> Sean in here. And you're involved in it too. And so is Jessica. Those are our three passport agents. So Sean, talk to us a little bit about, about passports. What do you want to know about passports? Well, Sean, how, how does someone go about getting a passport here at Gallatin County Public Library? Well, to start, they're going to want to look at travel.state.gov mm-hmm. and take a very close look at the requirement for passport photos. Okay. Because all of this information is visible online. Mm -hmm. And when you go and get a photo from a place like Walgreens or Walmart, the 16-year-old who has never even had a passport before Mm -hmm. may insist that the software says that the photograph is okay. Right. They are not to be the judge of that. They do not know what an okay passport photo is based on many months of experience with some of the worst passport photos we've ever had the displeasure of telling people are not adequate and will be turned down. So, okay, so you're starting off by saying you can go online, you get the documents to see what you need to do, and that there are very stringent, very, very precise requirements for your passport photo from the State Department, right? Yes. Okay. And that is non-negotiable. It needs to be well lit. Mm -hmm. You cannot have any glasses or headdresses or anything that obstructs the face. You can't be in camo print. There doesn't. There shouldn't be any confusion about you being a member of the U.S. military. Right. And also need to have a nice white background. Have to be centered. Have to have a neutral expression. Can't have the top of your head cropped off. Need to be framed about like so. Mm-hmm. Bit of the shoulders, head in center. And that is entirely beyond the capability of some people who take right. passport so, so there's been issues for photos. twenty dollars a pop multiple yeah. times over and that's they, and that is why the library is looking at we're place. looking at doing photos we're just getting yes, equipment i'd love to be able to promise that soon mm-hmm. i'll just have to say right now though i'll just have to say we can promise it when it's ready and then right now i think bonnie that email i sent forward yesterday came from uh the agents in charleston and i think they said it's like a five to seven, seven week. It's five to seven weeks right now to get your passport through. So if you bring it's it expedited. in, expedited. Yes. That's expedited. So the other, I think it was eight to eleven weeks for the other. Yes. So there's there's a backup right now. as a lot of people want to travel, and we know because we've seen how busy we are for handling the passports right now of what's going on. So someone, with Sean. So going back through this kind of process, you would, could someone call here at the library to set up an appointment? Yes. Okay. And first of all, I want to reiterate the importance of getting a good photograph mm-hmm. and how. To ensure that your application goes through successfully, we will say this photo is unacceptable Mm -hmm. and turn you away if it does not meet those standards because it's either we turn you away to get a new photo taken or halfway through the process your application gets turned down Mm -hmm. and we have to play this whole song and dance over again. And because and because right now, uh, like on that, Bonnie, those those it's starting to back up Mm -hmm. because it wasn't it wasn't eight to eleven weeks just a few weeks ago. So there's a lot of people right now. Uh, going through the passport process probably for summer trips Absolutely. and so th- what you what you two are doing and Jessica that's what the three of you are doing is to ensuring that that's only eight to eleven weeks not three weeks stop back right. and you and the queue could get longer and I want to add too with um, Sean talking about the photos that is the biggest reason the applications are sent back mm-hmm. are because of the photos also uh, more paperworky but also more cut and dry is you need to have an up-to-date ID so acceptable identification is a driver's license or a pre-existing U.S. passport. Okay. Those are all perfectly valid ways to identify yourself. You'll need a birth certificate in original. That will be sent in the passport application and then returned to you at the mailing address you've given in your filled out DS-11. Mm-hmm. Which brings us to the second point. 
you'll need a DS11 form. We give these out for free. If you want a DS11, come in and grab one. You do have to make an appointment to go through the application process, but you don't need to make an appointment to request forms from us. Also, maybe if you've already had a U.S. passport, you might already know this, but if, let me run through this list here, if you can submit your most recent U.S. passport book, or at least 16 years old when your most recent passport book was issued, it was issued less than 15 years ago, the book is not damaged, mutilated, or reported lost or stolen, and your U.S. passport was not limited to less than the normal 10-year validity period due to passport damage, mutilation, multiple passport thefts, losses, or non-compliance with 22 CFR 51.41, then, and your name has not changed, or your name has changed by marriage or court order and you can submit proper documentation of that, mm -hmm. you can use a form called a DS-82. And with that, it's entirely self-serve. You still have to get a photo taken, you have to mail it out, and you have to pay a very pretty penny to the U.S. Department of State. Mm -hmm. But you do not have to come to a passport acceptance facility. Okay. You can handle that entirely on your own, mail it out, and get a passport renewed. Okay. And all the information that I'm reading off is on a DS-82 that was published as of March of 2020. So this could go out of date the next time a form is published. Right. For the most up-to-date information, always go to travel.state.gov. Okay. So it sounds like, Sean, right now, <clears throat> if you have a question about passports or anything, you can call here, and, and you, can, you can help them through it. Yeah, and you can call here, and we'll probably just forward you to travel.state.gov if it stumps us. That, mm -hmm. That's the authority here. Always, if there's any confusion, I would urge you to resort to travel.state.gov. Thank you both for coming in, and uh, next week let's talk about how the program went on yes. Saturday. Yeah. And uh, how, many, how many passports uh, are booked this week? Uh, can we just close that? A lot. A lot. <laughs> that, that's, that's a good number. I like that. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, guys. You're welcome.